So I want you to get in your mind right now before we bring out the Holy Scriptures of God that I am the church. The building doesn't make me. I'm here. I'm relaxed. I'm born again. I'm here because I want to grow as the church. I mean, no organisms grow. Organisms grow. You put a fossil in water, it will grow. It's a living organism. You are the church. I mean, you know, the church needs substance. It needs supplement, it needs substance in order for it to or her, that is those who are here, part of the church. You need right substance so you can live right. Poor substance calls for you to live poorly. And depending on who you are as the church, depends on how you receive the word. Now I need for you to really get this in your mind, in your spirit. I am the church. This is not the church. Say it. <laughs> oh, you, you got it? I am the church. <laughs> Do you understand how precious you are? Doesn't matter what friends and family say about you because you messed up and you're still messing up and you trip and you fall. You get, get up with bloody noses. That is, your sin sometimes overtakes you. But remember what Paul says. Run the race with endurance. That means when stuff like that happens, get up, keep going because you are who? The church. We got to understand you are the church. You have a new spirit. You have a new right. You have a new connection. Old connections are gone. Old things are passed away. Need for you to look in the mirror when you leave this place and declare to yourself, I am the church. I am precious to Christ. I am different. I'm peculiar. I'm not like I used to be. I can't continue to do this because that ain't me no more. If you're not, I need for you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, how can I be the church? Do you accept me like this? Christ will respond, yes. But we can't continue in a holy relationship like this because, you know, I don't do what you do. And if we're going to be married, then you need to put some things down so we can get along. But I never said I didn't love you. I just don't think we can continue in a relationship like this. So what you're saying is you don't accept me for how I am today, sociological Verbiage. Yeah, I accept you, Jesus' response, just like you are. However, there's some things about you that is hindering our relationship. They respond, well, I thought you died for my sins. Did you die for my sin? Absolutely, son. I died for your sin and the whole world's sin. But understand what you just said. I died for it. Do that mean you continue in it? Are you not abusing my death, my sacrifice? Shouldn't you appreciate what I did, son, that I died for it? Well, how can I appreciate it, Jesus? I'm human. That's why you died for it. I make mistakes just like everybody else. Understand that, son. My daughter, everybody's going to make sin mistakes. However, you have to understand you have to mistake what sin is so you don't miss the mark. And if you miss the mark, then you'll constantly walk in the dark. And son, daughter, I don't want you to miss the mark because you have mistaken what sin and the effects of it really is. I love you just like you are, but I can't continue in a relationship like this. They respond. Say, hi. How then can I get it right? Well, I left some words for you. It was left in Romans chapter 6 and 33. And then over in Romans 8, remember what I said. If I backtrack and go to 7, it would tell you this. Now the grace abound, do I continue in sin? I answer the question for you, my son, my daughter. Certainly not. Why not? Once again, you died. But I didn't die so you can continue in what I died for. Matthew 26, verse 36, New King James Version. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. <clears throat> then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful 
even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Stay here and watch with me. Wow. That's wow. 39. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That's what I read the somatic title right there, not my will. Verse 40, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but, 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 there's a clause there. You better say, the flesh is weak. Be seated in his presence. Amen. Can we talk about this? I want to talk about this. If we, if we rewind the tape and go back to the book of Ephesians, which we've been preaching out of spiritual warfare, the armor of God, and we understand the last part of that text, it's talking about the armor. It says, and pray, pray with all prayer and supplication. Pray. After you have the sword of the spirit, which is a capital S there, which signifies to us that that spirit is the Holy Spirit. He said, and the spirit, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He said, then pray. What is, why, why, why connect the two? People, people don't put on swords. They fight with them. You, you don't put on a sword. You take it off so you can fight. Okay? I could go there and preach that all day, right? Because some of us look very beat up as Christians because you ain't fighting back. You think the gospel to come down and do everything for you. When you are the ones through prayer activate the warfare in the kingdom. He said the sword. Why? Why are you going through? Why are things allow or disallowed in your life because the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So the, the sword of the spirit, once again, which is the word of God, that word belongs to him. We use this it. We use the word by his spirit to fight. How do we fight? In prayer. This is why he follows up and pray. Always. But you can't pray effectively without the sword of the Spirit. Now, now, because God is so merciful and so understanding and his wisdom is, is uh, uh, infinite wisdom, he understands to do the ignorance of some of us, he just answers our cry. Why? Because he knows that you're sincere. But yet, he says, but this one will never move forward in the things, the greater things or the more magnificent things of me that they can see, the mystical things of me that they can see. Why? Because of their ignorance. Ignorance is not being dumb, people. Don't get me wrong. My people perish for a lack of what? Knowledge. What he was saying is that the ignorance is the ability, you have the capability to get knowledge, but you refuse to get it. Oh, my children had to read faithfully. I refuse to allow a child to grow up in my house and not read a book. Why? Because knowledge is at their fingertips. Ignorance says don't pick it up because I'm intellectually lazy. People perish because they don't know the truth. Prayer is a great weapon. Got to bring this out to you, try to get you out of here as quick as possible. I hate saying that because it's one of those rush things and I know you get tired, but it's funny that after church, we can stay here for four hours and talk. Y'all remember, remember that, right? Don't think the pastor don't be watching. I'll be watching. Yeah, 
I just put two and two together sometime. Like, it's funny. It's funny. You know, we can go out and eat, right? And we can stay at the table for hours. When we come to church, church is way too long over there. I just want you to think about that next time you go somewhere and you plan on being there five hours. And I mean, though, when the word is good and, you, and you're learning, time doesn't exist. It's there, but you don't feel it. You get what I mean? So let me exegete this text and let's talk about prayer again. This is a different way to, to, to approach prayer because we understand prior to this, Jesus is, is talking to his disciples. And, of course, uh, uh, Pilate is wanting to kill Jesus in this text. But how I many you know that... Uh, the father had control of what happened to the son on earth. Uh, and many times you hear Jesus saying, it's not my time. But, but however, here it was time. So he had to tell his disciples for the third or fourth time that it, he was going to be taken and be crucified. He began to talk on that, on that manifest. Uh, but then a woman comes in the room. A woman off the street comes in the room with some costly oil, because in these uh, early Judeo, Judeo uh, days, they used to anoint the harlots or the hookers on the corner carry very expensive perfume, because they wanted to smell good, because how I many you know smells attract people? Oh, y'all ain't hear me. <laughs> I tried to get my boys the other day in, in the mall to spray on some of that good stuff, you know. I said, boy, this, you better smell this. You know, and little Christian's like, you know, he tried to ignore it, but he smelled good. <laughs> Smells attract people. So they put on this costly oil, and they used to carry it in the alabaster. But she took out the oil, which was, which, was, which was expensive in that time, and she poured it on Jesus' head. You can always tell your betrayer or the wrong one in the room when they talk outside of the spiritual things. So when you start talking Bible, they start talking natural, you can almost pinpoint them who they are. So here's the natural man, the one who is going to betray Jesus. He busts out and he says this. What are you doing? Pouring that expensive oil on this the Messiah you talking about. Are you kidding me? You're going to waste some oil on him? What a mockery. You pour some oil. We could have. He said we could have sold that and helped the poor. Are you kidding me, Judas? You've been stealing from the treasury since you've been around. We're gonna talk about this because you 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 can't always listen to what people say to indicate who they are. Because if I ask you by a poll or a research right now. To survey yourselves. Many of you will pompous yourself. No offense. But many of us will say, I'm this, I'm this, I'm normally this, I'm normally this, and I'm normally this. This is what I'm shooting for. I have this, I have that, and I want to be that. And we'll pompous ourselves, but we'll never speak the truth about what we know about ourselves when it shows a weakness or a, a kind of degenerating disposition. For instance, I'm very short-tempered. You know, I have very low patience. I'm working on it. I don't like foolishness. My patience for it is like this thing. Need help, Jesus? I mean, just don't tell me anything and expect for me to smile at you like, <laughs> and you're lying to me. I'm very low patience with that. Just tell me that you're a nasty, rude person, and you're working on it. I'm not saved. I don't believe in Jesus. Just come to church because I'm made to. But don't lie to me because when you lie, what you're doing is fulfilling Jeremiah 17. The heart is full of wickedness. Desperately full of it. No one knows it. But guess what? Judas knew what was in his heart. He knew his motives. He knew his intentions. Jesus knew him because the Father told him. He was divinely instructed. 
then one would come into the flock to the four brothers and sisters and deceive and betray him even unto death. He points him out. Why would you say such thing? He said, Judas, disciples, listen, what this woman has done is going to be written and heard throughout history. What she was literally doing in the spirit was preparing him for his crucifixion by pouring oil on his head. I'm going to talk about that. Keep oil, oil on his head. See, some of us want power, but we don't have the oil yet. And, and the oil just don't come by showing up to the building. There's a lot of mega nothings out there, meaning there's a lot of people in buildings with no power. But I want to create a small mega explosion of power in this little building because we have people feel. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So he, 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 he talks about this and he exposes it. And then Peter, of course, jumps in and he tells Peter and the other disciples, what this woman is doing is preparing me for my death. Why? Because in those times, they used to anoint them with a frankincense and myrrh and all these different oils and they wrapped them in linen so the body would smell good because they didn't do what we've done today. They didn't shoot them up with, uh, you know, um, uh, abominum fluid and, and take out all the insides and all that stuff. They didn't do that. They just wrapped them and they mummified them. But they had to smell good unless the, the smell of a dead body permeates through the city. And they would put them in tombs and close the door of the tomb so the smell couldn't escape. No, she was preparing him for death. Now, she didn't know what she was doing. But yet Jesus always gives a, a physical revelation to bring out a spiritual manifestation. Peter, Peter says, y'all know, here's where I go back. None of us knows us, but we talk because we want to show the other person that we really write. You may have great intentions. Peter had great intentions, but he didn't really know what was in his heart. He had no idea why, because the oil hadn't been poured and pressed out of them yet. I'm going to get that. Just hold on just a little while longer. Just hold on a little while. You get that? You ain't writing. But the oil hadn't been poured and hadn't been pressed out of him yet. So he didn't have a clue what was in him. He just knew what most of us knew. Man, I come to church. I like the preacher. I like the family. Man, you know, I pray. Oh, I feel something sometime. And then, you know, when I do this, I feel like jumping sometime. And God answers my cries. I get in my word. But the oil hadn't been poured on you yet. And Pressed out. Not yet. Peter thought that he was ready for what God or Jesus had called him to do. Guess what he says? He said, after Jesus said, I'm going to be crucified uh, just in a short time. Now, oh, Jesus, no, you're not. <laughs> I forbid. If you die, I'm dying with you. You know how your homies do. You know how your girlfriends do. We, we ride and die partners. Girl, I don't care if you move to Georgia. I'm right behind you in my U-Haul. Believe me, as a pastor for 11 years, we have heard a lot of good stories. And here's the main one. I love this church and I'll never leave. <laughs> That's what I be wanting to do. <laughs> Stop that. You're testing yourself because now you have to be tested. Jesus responds, look what he say, man of God. He says this, Peter, Peter, hold on. Before the rooster crow, it is normal time, can I say it like that? But it's normal times in the wee hours of the midnight, before it hit his third crow, you're going to deny me three times. That means every time the rooster crow, you're going to deny me, Peter, stop. I can only imagine Peter probably stood there dumbfounded and looking like, you going to bust me out like that, Jesus? So I'm something like Jesus. I'm very low tolerance for the foolishness. You ain't got a lot of me. If you're a hater, just tell me. I'm hating on you right now. I don't like you. I, I, your shoes is nice. I want some. I don't like you for that reason. Don't pat me on the back. Don't pat nobody on the back and tell them you're friends, but you're a foe. You understand what I'm saying? You will be figured out soon and very soon. You have to understand something about spirituality and naturality. In the natural, we can do anything and say anything and fool anybody.
But in the spiritual, if you have the spirit in you, he's going to discern who you are and tell that person. Peter, you're about to deny me. You got good motives. Some of you have good motives for people that you believe are good people. You love them. But unfortunately, you haven't been tested yet. You have no idea what a true friendship is yet or what a marriage is yet or being loyal to your pastors and the other members. Some of you have not a clue what that means yet. Some of you were transferred churches before this year is over with yet because you have not been pressed. They sit down. Jesus tells them because he knows who Judas is. In the text, they're eating. Lord's Supper is now an emblem of the resurrection. How we are to uh, enact in the body of Christ, the bread was yet the crumbs, it was signified his body that was beaten and writ, the crumbs. The wine was significant of his blood. Everything has to do with the blood. The body was it's not as significant as the blood. In the blood, it dictates who you are. The body this signifies where you came from. The blood dictates who you are. Nowadays, you touch something, leave, leave a fingerprint, the blood will find you. But I didn't see his face. But the blood will find you. He looked, he looked like he had a big head and lofty ear, but I didn't see his whole face. Did he leave a print? The blood will find you. See, it was about the blood. Jesus came from the bloodline of David. His blood was righteous. Now coming, coming from the, the father, impeccability. Meaning he had no sin in him when he was born. But yet he had to come as a man. The only reason why he had to come as a man in the same human flesh that we see in this room. Why? Because in order to save something of this kind, its kind have to die in the same place. But yet, he was impeccable. Theological term means that he was born without the ability to sin, but yet he was tempted to sin. The mystical part about him is that his father, he was born without a human father, so he didn't have the blood of his father. Every woman and male child, every female and male child in this room has the blood of their father. The female has the blood of her father. The male has the blood of his father. Yet he carries more chromosomes. Jesus had a heavenly father who had no earthly design. So when he put Jesus into Mary by, through, through divine intervention, he had his father's blood. Oh, Y'all ain't hear me. So he carried the chromosomes of his father. Yet he felt the pressures of sin and how they feel when they come upon the human body, but yet because he had his father's blood, he could not see. <laughs> so, so looking at us, because we have the blood of our fathers who was born into sin, we are able and capable of sinning. You understand? We need to talk more about the blood in church. He said, what are you going to betray me at this table? He began to ask, who is it? The one who knew who he was said to Jesus, get this, is it me? When people ask you, do you think I'm real? Don't answer that question because you already know the answer. <laughs> Listen to this. They get all the way to, to the garden. I just had to lay a historical foundation for you. They get all the way to the garden of the I have to bring out the name Gethsemane because it is mentioned the exact same way in his Greek term. Gethsemane. And what it means, oh God, 
I had to understand what this meant. This short-term gasinomy. It meant an oil press. Its name meant an oil press. Wait, hold on. Got to bag up one moment. They get all the way to the garden. 